meeting together, read the standard opening statement. This is Northampton Conservation uh, Commission for the 22nd of October, 2020. The commission is a group of unpaid volunteers who work to protect the natural environment of the Northampton. We are concerned with the aid interests defined in the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act. And our duties also include open space acquisition and management. We operate in a way that's consistent with open meeting law requirements. All meeting dates, times, and agendas are posted in advance, and we invite public comment during our meetings. However, we ask the public to limit their comments to issues that are within our purview. Today's agenda includes a uh, request for determination of applicability to determine if resource area boundaries are delineated accurately and whether well installation is subject to the Wetlands Act or the Wetlands Ordinance, uh, this on Turkey Hill Road. Uh, then a request for determination of applicability to determine if an area is subject to the Wetlands Act or the Wetlands Ordinance, uh, this on Sylvester Road, and a notice of intent for drainage improvement, including culvert removal, new drains, and a head wall within bordering vegetated wetland, this on Rocky Hill Road. Uh, we also have a request for a certificate of compliance on Hawthorne Avenue. Uh, we had no minutes, I think, this week. Is that correct, Sarah? Correct. I uh, forgot to send them out, unfortunately. Okay. We'll get to them next time. Um, so first case. Oh, first, are there any general public comments apart from uh, anything having to do with a specific case? Um, I have a comment. Are we still in the uh, stage two uh, drought status? As far as I know. Mark would know that. Yes, we're still in a, in a legal drought. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and I, we should probably announce that we are being recorded. Uh, uh, so first uh, case, the request for determination of ability to determine if resource area boundaries are delineated accurately and whether a well installation is subject to the Wetlands Act or the Wetlands Ordinance, this on Turkey Hill Road. Uh, someone here representing that application? Okay, let's see. Rachel, uh, wanna? Uh, yeah. Uh, Rachel Leffler with Berkshire Design Group, uh, representing the applicant, um, and Elon Hirney here from Coon Riddle Architects is also here to help represent. Good. We've uh, seen the written materials. Want to uh, present a uh, summary? Hey, Hello. Alec. Hello. Good evening. Sorry, I'm a bit late. Uh, yes, there are. Um, on the north side of Turkey Hill Road, on the opposite side, there is a perennial stream. Um, those were wetland flags flagged with HW by Ward Smith. Um, and that would have a 200 foot river front area for a small portion of the driveway entrance across the street. Um, and there were a number of uh, wetlands near there, also wetlands flags uh, F and B series. Um, and then moving up the driveway uh, on the western side of the buildable area and, and near the existing house um, there are a series of wetlands um, and there's a an intermittent stream which we believe the previous homeowner dug a trench to kind of divert the water coming down the hill away from the front of the property and created a channelized uh, area and those are wetlands flags um, a a through n b series And then the client um, is looking to, uh, we're gonna come back to the commission with a notice of intent per submittal for their plans to build a new house on the property. And they're looking at possibly taking down the existing house. Um, and they, in this process of assessment, they had the well, the existing well um, on the property, which is in the 100 foot buffer, uh, but not in the 50 foot buffer. Um, they examined that and determined that the well probably would not be sufficient to support the new home. Um, and so part of the submission is to look at digging a new well um, further to the south of the property um, to provide that, to confirm that they'll be able to provide water to the new house. And so the plans show building a temporary pad out of gravel, um, putting in erosion control barriers uh, for, the, for the equipment and then um, letting them dig the well and then afterward taking out that temporary pad and restoring it. That area is open lawn currently. Um, 
So we would also rely on the commission's recommendations for anything that would we need to consider with moving equipment across the lawn and that's in the buffer zone. Elon, is there anything else that I should add? No, I, th I think you covered it. Okay. <laughs> Happy to answer. I'm mostly here to answer questions. Um, is there a septic system on site? There is an existing septic system. Um, we've had, it is outside of the 100 foot buffer. Um, we've done a series of preliminary tests and recently a perk test uh, far outside the buffer zone. Um, and so that's over 100 feet from the proposed well? Yeah. Okay. Because and all that, all that will be coming coming before you as part of our notice of intent package um, when that design is complete. I was having trouble orienting myself. How uh, far from the uh, uh, parking area that leads into the quarry is this? Uh, I'm not familiar with the parking area for the quarry. Uh, it's maybe about halfway up Turkey Hill Road. Up Turkey Hill Road, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Just a curiosity question. I was having trouble when I was looking at the uh, uh, drawings. They're uh, narrow enough in scope that I couldn't place it along Turkey Hill Road. And oh, moves past it. <laughs> it sort of blends into the hill. Hi, I just have a question about the uh, the well itself. Um, it says, I think it's a temporary drinking water well. Do you have any specifications on the well, how much pumping it will be doing, um, if that's going to be consistent 24 hours a day, or if there's going to be more, it's going to be intermittent? Um, the the new well would be a permanent well. The, um, the pad, the access pad is a construction pad, and that would be a temporary situation. So long term, um, the, the well, the top of the well is about a six inch diameter head that'd be sticking out about 18 to 24 inches above the ground. That would be the permanent condition. Um, what our plans show is all the temporary uh, protection measures and uh, establishing for the equipment to safely put a piece of equipment on the ground and, and drill down to the well on a, it's a sloping site. Um, in terms of the, the calculations of the amount of use and um, flow rates, that will be determined at the time where, where, where two things were, what it can, the capacity it has is something that will be determined at the time of drilling. Um, and then secondly, the, um, the team is bringing on an MEP to help us with those calculations to estimate the amount of uh, demand for the, for the house and how much it'll be using. Great, thank you. What kind of drilling equipment is going to be required? Uh, I've seen um, drilling devices as smaller than a bobcat or bigger than an excavator. What, what is it going to take in this case? We can confirm that for you. I believe it's about an excavator size. Is that what you understand, Elon? Uh, I would assume so. We're, we're, you never know how far you have to go down to get the appropriate amount of water. So since we're going to all this effort to bring a machine back there, I assume they'll bring a larger one back there in case they have to go deep. What are, what are the plans for the tailings from the drilling operation? Could you? Uh, the contractor has requested and it's shown on the plan an eight by eight, eight spoils pit. Um, where they would tailings in the in the ground adjacent to of course the amount of tailings would depend on how deep they go mm -hmm. yeah so, so i've got two two quick questions um is there a reason why the new wall is located in the 100 foot buffer zone or i mean rather than just outside of it um and then when you think about access, it looks like it's a mix of lawn and, and brush and trees. Um, do you have a sense for how you're going to be able to access that site with the equipment? Because my guess is going to be a truck mounted drilling rig, um, let, less excavator looking and more uh, like a pump truck for a, um, a construction site. 
but uh, I'm just curious how they envision getting it back there. And then, like I say, why, why, if, if that is that a preferred location for the well? Yeah, we, um, we've been looking at, first of all, the site is a 40 acre site. Um, and the client really is trying to be conscious of their, of their footprint. Um, and so we looked at a number of different development options and which is what we'll, we'll bring to you um, more plans at the next hearing. But what we were finding is that of the developable area in this where the existing houses and the existing sheds are, it's the most level part of the site um, where we would um, put a house to, to minimize the amount of impact to the site. Um, as we do that, then we have to keep an eye on the septic location, which moves to the north. Um, and then we want to keep septic and the wells far away from each other. And then thirdly, there is a benefit to the, to the client to um, by having the buffer zone around the well, it actually serves as a protective measure for the well and their drinking water quality also. So it's look, the buffer zone is protecting their drinking water and, um, and the resource area. And have they thought about how they're getting the equipment in? Oh, sorry. Uh, it, it is, um, I don't know if you can see in the photos there, um, at the top of the driveway, it is lawn and there is a, a corridor of lawn to the well location. And that's okay. enough that shows it um, to minimize the disturbance. Okay, yeah, I see it thanks. Mm -hmm. And to get the equipment in there, uh, any trees? or other substantial foliage have to be taken down? Nothing substantial. Um, we have had a, uh, an arborist go out and identify significant trees and no significant trees would be removed in the process. I have one comment about the cuttings. Uh, I do this kind of work professionally, so I have a lot of understanding how drilling happens. <laughs> So, so they're going to use drive and wash to set the casing. And as you mentioned, you're going to have a discharge area where the wash water goes and all the fines settle out. Um, but after the drilling is done and you remove those erosion controls out of there and you try to demobilize from the site, you're going to have just a giant pile of fines. Um, what's your thoughts of how to manage that? So in the future, it just doesn't wash into any resource areas, whether it's stormwater or rainwater. We, we might lean on you actually to give us some advice on that. Um, we will be working on the site uh, and developing it further. So it's something that we can incorporate into our plans um, if it doesn't fit into the spoils, spoils pit. There is a, there is a contractor uh, engaged already for this project, Tiagno Construction, and they have Taylor Davis engaged as our site contractor. So um, they are planning to do some additional work this fall and I'm sure that we can relocate any of that to another location um, as they're doing the other work. That sounds good, thank you. Mm -hmm. Other questions from commissioners? And I don't know if there are other uh, members of the public that might have uh, comments or questions. Um, hard to tell on Zoom gatherings, but uh, I want to make that offering. If not, uh, can I get a motion to close the hearing? Moved. And a second? Second. All in favor? Oh, roll call, Sarah. It's not a technical hearing, so happily we don't need a so call for that. All right, good. Then, um, all in favor, aye. 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 Uh, all right. Um, so Sarah, um, your um, comments that uh, if the commission is, that the work will not alter the buffer zone that we can, um, issue a positive determination um, uh, that 
Um, what are the boundaries? There's a couple different components. So the, it's um, part of it. It's um, so I, I didn't have any issues with the the well and delineation at all. Um, the board did a great job picking on some picking up on some really quirky stuff out there. Um, so for for that portion of it, um, positive determination by checking box one, two A and and five, and and then there's a, a different discussion about the the work. So if the commission finds that the proposed well work um, won't create an alteration to the resource area, check box three. But it seems uh, that one of the concerns um, is if no large uh, substantial foliage is going to be removed or damaged. Um, and then Jason's concern about if there's uh, not going to be a pile of stuff that will get washed into a resource area, if, if, which we could um, address as a, um, as a condition. Um, then I think, are we in agreement, commissioners, that, that would be, uh, there would be no um, damage to the resource area as a result of this project? Yes. Yes, I agree. Okay, so then we have the uh, uh, the, the second part about um, the uh, having to remove the um, pad afterwards as a, an additional condition, um, and that uh, Sarah, one of you, one of you, your comments I wasn't clear about that. Um, this area is not to be included as a previously disturbed area in any subsequent NOI filing, um, but we're acknowledging that it's currently uh, a mowed lawn area, and we often consider that to be previously disturbed. I mean, it's yeah, and I just didn't. I wanted to make clear that if the an NOI were to be filed, that this wouldn't show up as a previously degraded area if it's still there. Um, I, I don't anticipate that that probably would be the case, okay. but I, I just wanted to call it out. Okay. Um, and um, so, uh, someone want to? I, I have a con um, concern about the fines, though. Um, Pardon me, Mason? I, I have a concern about the, the, the pile of fines that's going to be left from the, uh, the well drill. Yeah, and I think we could modify the condition, you know, that the pad shall be removed and any excess fines. Um, be as part taken of off the, site. You know, yeah, taken off site. Yeah, or so we're not, distributed on site we're not dealing with a pile on a slope. Yeah, yeah I, don't I, think the, I don't think the fines need to go off site. They just need to be in an upland area and in a yeah. place where there's not going to be any storm water to, to cause them to erode or move into a resource area. That's all. Right. Awesome. Yeah. We, we can include that as part of that condition. Right. So someone want to make a, a motion, um, including Sarah's recommendations and those additional conditions that are, uh, as uh, Mason and Jason and Randy have all indicated. Sierra, have you managed to record that so I don't have to try and repeat it all? I did, yes. Okay. So moved. So make a motion to that effect. Yep. yep. So moved. I'll second. And a second. Now, do you need a roll call? Uh, yes, we do. Kevin. Yes. Mason. Yes. Jack. Yes. Jason. Yes. Randy. Yes. Alec. Yes. All right. Unanimous. Thank you. Great. Um, thank you. Um, good luck. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Uh, next case is a request for determination of applicability to determine if an area is subject to the Wetlands Act or the Wetlands Ordinance in this on Sylvester Road. Um, and uh, Sarah provided us a picture of that one. Is there somebody here representing that applicant? Yes, that would be me, Lance Curley. Good. We've seen the uh, written material. You want to present uh, a bit of a summary for us? Lance, I don't know if you have any um, a presentation or if you want to share any plans, but I can make you a co-host if so. Um, I really am here kind of um, 
it doesn't appear that Ward is actually hopping on uh, or he hasn't yet. So I might have to act on behalf of the meeting we had on site. Um, and I'm available to answer any questions that you have, but um, essentially there's a man-made depression on a parcel of land on Sylvester Road that um, we were looking at and um, Ward visited the site and uh, delineated a small wetland area there while we were on site a month and a half ago or so. Um, and it was suggested that we run this through an RDA to get the town's take on um, this determination of whether this is a um, isolated wetland. So that's, that's what I've got. Questions or comments from commissioners? What was the size? Is how is that isolated? It's under <clears throat> it's under our ordinance. Um, we have a size limit. Right. We um, Heritage did the the survey and provided the plan that was submitted along with the RDA and Ward's findings kind of were pivoting off that survey and the square footage is roughly 450 square feet of area that was delineated by Ward on site. So I have a question. What, what was the, in, the intent of delineating wetlands? Was it just a fun exercise or is there a future project happening here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, there's a proposed new construction, single family residence, uh, which the original site plan that Heritage uh, generated for the current owners um, indicated that there was a depression there, but they put the driveway right through the path of this depression, assuming we would just fill it in during construction. And it was brought to our attention that uh, it's been around long enough that uh, it looks like the woods have kind of reclaimed that particular pit. So um, that was the circumstance was that it's a flag lot and um, it's, you know, got a hundred foot wide pole to the flag and there's no way to stay away from that depression and um, remain compliant with setbacks and what have you, if that's in fact determined that that's, that's an isolated wetland. So uh, our interest is in working with the client to try to position the house um, so it's obviously abiding by the necessary setbacks and the way that the lot's set up right now it would be in question as to whether we could build on that lot as it is. So that's what we're here to determine. I see. All right, thank you for that. Sorry, I left that part out, but I, I thought the, the RDA might have cleared that, clarified that. But. Any other questions or comments from commissioners? Can you describe what, what it's like in the spring after snow melt? Is it soggy there? Is it, um, you know, could you describe it a bit more? I mean, I have the photo here, but it would be helpful to, to, to learn a little bit more about it. Um, personally, I have not witnessed it in the kind of spring. Um, so I, I can't speak to that directly. Um, Ward and I did have discussions about, you know, the presence of certain species that would, you know, make it appear that it held water for periods of time. And it was difficult to tell um, other than some leaf litter at the base of it while we met out on site. Um, you know, it wasn't, uh, it was kind of a late summer visit. So hard to say. There, there definitely was evidence of water stained leaves. So that indicates that it does hold water for some period of time in the spring. And there, there wasn't a whole lot of vegetation in it, at least when I visited in the pouring rain on Friday. 
Um, but there were a few wetland indicator species. There were, were no large trees, so couldn't look for any tree indicators like buttress roots or anything like that. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions or comments from commissioners? If not, any questions or comments from the public? If not, um, motion to close. Moved. And a second. Second. And we can just say aye, because um, it's an RDA. All aye. 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 And um, so it uh, uh, seems that the indications are at this point that it is subject to the ordinance, not to the Wetlands Act, but to the ordinance. Uh, um, at least reading the material, reading Sarah's uh, recommendation. Um, so that's a, that would warrant a positive determination. And, um, Sarah, somewhere you said which box that we have to check for that. Uh, box so was positive determination by checking box six, and that yes. indicates that the area is subject to the ordinance and not the Wetlands Protection Act. There's no inlet or outlet here, so it's not jurisdictional under state law. And then um, I also recommended box two be just to indicate that the boundaries aren't confirmed, and uh, Ward definitely delineated a, the, an approximate edge, but I. I don't think he intended to um, say that those were the, the absolute boundaries. So that would be a, a further effort. So it would be box six, uh, positive determination at, at box six and uh, 2B. Um, someone want to make a motion to that effect? So moved. And a second? Second. And now we do need a roll call. Sarah? Okay. Uh, Kevin? Yes. Mason? Yes. Jack? Yes. Jason? Yes. Randy? Yes. Alec? Yes. All right, thank you. Good, thank you. Um, and we have, according to my clock, two minutes before the allotted hour for the next case. Um, and I think the, uh, the only other business that might be insertable into the time uh, probably will take more than two minutes, I'm thinking. So uh, uh, my guess is we just, now it says one minute, my iPhone says one minute. Uh, so um, let's just wait a few seconds and then go on with the next case rather than try to insert anything, unless you have something very quick, Sarah. Uh, I do not. Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate your assistance in this matter. Good enough. Thank you. I made you a co-host, so you should be able to share your screen at any point. We now have a notice of intent for drainage improvement, culvert removal, new drains, new head wall within bordering vegetated wetland. Uh, it's applicant is TPW located on Route 66. Rocky Hill Road. Who's going to um, make that presentation? I think you're muted. No, oh, Joanna. Yeah. Sorry about that. Um, I'll be making that presentation for the DPW. I'm Johanna Stacy. I'm the senior environmental planner for the DPW. Um, and Sarah, I do have some slides that I could share for a slide presentation? Sure, uh, you should be able to. If it doesn't work, let me know. Can I control that from my end or? Yes. Uh, so on the bottom, there's a, should be a green share screen button and hit that to start the screen sharing. Okay.
Here we go. Hopefully everybody can see a map. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, so the project area is located on the north side of Rocky Hill Road, adjacent to the um, Hampshire House of Corrections driveway. And <clears throat> what, we, what we're aiming to do is replace and reconfigure some of the drainage pipes that flow down the driveway and um, towards that wellland area. Many of them are small and one is blocked by a utility pole. Um, so it's not functioning well. And this has led to road flooding and has a history of slope failure on the south side. So just to give you a sense of the existing site conditions, the top right photo is looking west um, from the side of Rocky Hill Road. Um, and the, the drainage we'll be working on kind of runs down the driveway and then runs across this area to a manhole, um, which then crosses the road to the south side of the road. The center photograph is looking facing westward. I'm sorry, eastward, southeast, um, towards the area that's been delineated as a DBW. Um, it's hard to tell, but under this shrub, there is an inlet um, for a 30 inch pipe that, um, and there's some stone here that's placed along the inlet the pipe goes to this manhole and then crosses under the road. <clears throat> Just to step back and um, the, plans, the plans are a little bit busy. So I wanted to take a minute just to sort of explain what, what is currently happening with the drainage. Mm -hmm. uh, there's drainage from the House of Corrections that comes down the driveway through an 18 inch pipe. It also picks up drainage from catch basins on the side of the driveway um, and goes, flows through a 12 inch pipe, it's actually a smaller pipe that goes to the manholes. So it picks up drainage from the catch basins here and flows through a 24 inch pipe out to an outfall on the south side of the road. Meanwhile, there's a second outfall on the south side of the road for the 30 inch pipe connected to the wetland. Um, and that drains, provides drainage from the wetland and also from a driveway culvert that flows underneath the driveway and then underground and connects to the pipe there. So there's a lot. So this 24 inch pipe is trying to pick up a lot. Um, 30 inch pipe has less. Um, and the utility pole that was drilled into the culvert is here. Um, so there's, there's flooding over in this area. <clears throat> so what we're planning to do is re reconfigure the drainage so that this driveway culvert goes up to this manhole. We install a new manhole and driveway this, the drainage coming from the House of Corrections comes to that manhole along with the catch basin and the culvert. And then in order to get around this utility pole, we're bringing the drain line over this way to connect to the, to drain into the 30 inch pipe. Um, the delineated wetland is over in this area. And so that drain pipe work would be in buffer area to BBW. Um, we also propose to put in a head wall to that 30 inch pipe and also to install a new manhole so that the manhole is off the road and um, doesn't have traffic driving over it. Just to zoom in a little bit more to the area where there's uh, the most activity going on <clears throat> that is subject to regulation. Um, 
This is the area of the new manhole here, the new head wall here, which has been placed as far to the edge of the wetland as possible. Um, there is a total of 13 square feet of wetland impact due to the, the footprint of the head wall. We're proposing to um, replicate that wetland area adjacent to the head wall. There's no head wall there now, right? That's correct. That's correct. There's some stone placed in the bank. What causes the flooding in the road? Is it the, the pipes are surcharging because they're not sized right or? Um, correct. I mean, a, a big part of it is the fact that there's a, there's a 12 inch utility pole that's been drilled into a 12 inch pipe. So it's effectively completely blocking the flow through that pipe. So any flow that would be coming into this culvert it backs up and backs up onto the road. Um, so, so will the new pipe bypass the one that was damaged by the utility pole? Correct, correct. The, yeah. the idea is to eliminate this, the drain line here um, and redirect the flow around the utility pole and over to the 30 inch pipe where there's more capacity to, to handle the flow. I hope the utility company is helping you pay for this. <laughs> I was gonna say, do we know who to yell at about the utility pole? So the uh, pipe that was damaged by the utility pole went into that 30 inch pipe and this is just redirecting it to the same 30 inch pipe crossing the road or is that changing where all the it looks like the right. flow coming down from the driveway and from that hillside there then into this pipe so that's additional flow in that case. um yeah so currently let me back up here so currently a lot of the flow is being directed towards the 24 inch pipe yeah. um and actually before it gets to the 24 inch pipe it's going through a 12 inch pipe. Um, not really clear why they went from bigger pipes to smaller pipes, but that's what it is. Um, so to try to redistribute that flow, we're, we're redirecting some of it over here towards the 30 inch pipe. Both outfalls discharge to the same wetland area. So we don't expect any change in flow that's going to that wetland area. Got it, thanks. Yeah, a lot of pipes in that one little area. There are, there are. The, the blue pipes are the, the pipes that we plan to work on. The gray mm -hmm. pipes are, we're not planning to touch. But they're not gonna be removed, they're just gonna be uh, left in place? The pipes will be cut and I believe they'll be filled. Any other questions, comments from commissioners? So I, uh, so if more water is traveling from the manhole and crossing Rocky Hill Road to the outlet on the south side of the road, uh, why is there not any change to the outflow design? Is there any chance that that increased flow is going to cause problems with the outflow? Um, so, so currently the same amount of flow is making its way from the north side of the road, or actually from the edge of pavement here, over to 
to the south side of the road. Um, what we're doing is is just redirecting it so that the flow is. Yeah, so it's all concentrated. The flow matches the pipe sizes. It's all concentrated in that one pipe now instead of two. So the discharge area would seem to be more greatly affected. So it could be some scouring. Yeah. So well, this, this, so, so this 24 inch pipe is still in place to accept um, flow from the roadway, catch basins that are exist. Okay, yeah. yeah. So there's still, um, you know, and it's, it's watershed is really kind of the bottom of the um, the bottom of the driveway here, as well as the roadway, is going into this pipe. Um, so that's a fair amount of fair amount of flow that it's getting already. So there'll be some increase to the thirty-inch pipe, but not all of uh, the uh, that lesser Correct. pipe. That's Correct. still going to be collecting. If, if I could jump in here a second, the only um, change and in increase to the 30 inch pipe is that single catch basin in the um, House of Corrections driveway. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the flow to the 30 inch pipe would remain the same as it was in originally intended. Part of the problem is that flow intended to get to that pipe is not getting there right now because of the utility pole obstruction. So we would be reestablishing uh, an existing flow that was intended to go there. Uh, at the moment, that flow is still getting all to the south, but it's, it's uh, getting there by way of flooding across the road. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from commissioners? Regarding the, um, the catch basin that's gonna go in the House of Corrections driveway, the new one, is there a sump as part of that? Um, let's see, interesting. We, we're actually going to maintain that catch basin won't be replaced. We're just replacing the frame and grate on the catch basin. Yes. Thank you. Um, and that's actually on. It's actually on the House of Corrections property. I, I don't know. I don't know offhand the, whether it's a deep sump catch basin. Jason, I would assume that's a deep sump basin. I'm sure that basin was put in as part of the Route 66 reconstruction back in the early 2000s, and that would have been uh, a standard procedure at that point, I believe. Thank you, David. Other comments or questions from commissioners? Any comments or questions from any members of the public that might be on the call? Sarah, you have anything? Anything you want to add before we close the hearing? Uh, I, I don't think so. Um, and DEP and Mark is here if you wanted to mention. I had some concerns about some work that was done across the street, um, but that's filled in nicely and there's it's been impacted by flooding and other issues over the years. And there's no work proposed on the southern side of Route 66 as part of the current project. Right. I, I saw the DEP comments in the paperwork. Um, Mark, do you have any comments or questions? 
No, I swapped a couple emails with Sarah. She explained uh, some of what was going on, uh, you know, the work and the, the wetlands on the south side. My only concern was, you know, you know, going, and it's nothing really you can do now, but, you know, there was a lot of work done on the south side there. And nowadays, the regulations do not allow you to put a new point source discharge in a wetland. So I, I was concerned the wetland line was not, came very close to the road there. And if it was a new, if it was a replacement pipe, and it went into wetlands, you have to come back, but mm -hmm. existing, I'm, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. But I just want everybody to know, you cannot put a stormwater point source in bank or in land underwater or in the wetlands themselves for the future, not for this. Yep. Um, and DPW and I both went back into our files and, and looked at what had happened on the south side of 66 and we were, couldn't really determine for certain what happened, but there was a, a major erosion issue in 2018 that was permitted under um, an emergency certification to be addressed. So I, if, if orthos show um, potential wetlands loss there, it may just be from that significant erosion. Okay, I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. If you guys are happy with the work, then I'll be happy. Good enough, thank you. So uh, can we get a motion to close if there are no more comments or questions? No we'll comments. And a second? Second. Uh, this one is a hearing, so we, we, we do need a roll call for this one. Okay. Uh, Kevin? Yes. Mason? Yes. Jack? Yes. Jason? Yes. Randy? Yes. And Alex? You're muted, Alex. Yes. <laughs> so, um, Sarah had a recommendation here. Uh, standard conditions, including uh, standard conditions regarding the construction and reporting of uh, uh, bordering vegetated wetland replication area, uh, that little area to be rebuilt. Oh, the thing we did not discuss actually before closely. Sarah also uh, recommended discussion of reseeding mix. You, Sarah, I assume that was around the new head wall? Correct. Okay. Yeah, and uh, Johanna, sorry if I missed that in the in the application. I just wasn't sure what mix you were using. Um, no, that's okay. Or if we, you even know yet. Yeah, no, we fully intend to reseed um, any exposed soil in the work area. What about those seed pipes? Is that the question? Yeah. Thank you. Mm. So, someone uh, want to make a recommendation to uh, issue that order of conditions as per staff recommendation? Moved. And a second? Second. Any further discussion? Any other special conditions? If not, all in favor? Sarah? Kevin? Yes. Mason? Yes. Jack? Yes. Jason? Yes. Randy? Yes. Alec? Yes. Thank you. All right. Very good. Good luck. Thank you. Um, then we have a uh, the other item on our agenda is a request for a certificate of compliance at 17 Hawthorne Terrace. Um, and is there someone here representing that? Uh, uh, we yep, Valerie Miller from SWCA. <clears throat> uh, we've seen uh, the materials, um, relatively old. Ma Ma Mason, I didn't <laughs> see your name on this one. It's yeah, really you old. Notice, you notice I didn't sign it, so it could have been a, a night that <laughs> you, were there, you may not have been at that meeting, but you were, mm -hmm. you were in the commission. Oh yeah, I was there. Our <clears throat> member so then. It is a just a certificate of compliance for a 
a wetland that was built in association with constructing a single family home back in 1992. So I had to dig in the files at my office for these things and came up with like two items, which I submitted. One was a, a report on how they were going to construct it. And it, it was pretty detailed. It had a sketch in it. Um, I think you've all seen of where the wetlands were. So it was like a 900 foot square fill they wanted to do as part of construction. And then they rebuilt this wetland vernal pool um, by making sort of a deep sort of a uh, ditch and then adding wetlands around the edge. So they were trying to make it work as a vernal pool. So it ended up being about a thousand or so square feet when it was final. Um, and Sarah actually has seen it and I haven't. So I have to confess that um, she did a site visit um, to look at it to see if it was still there and functioning. The homeowner, it isn't the original homeowner when the house was built. The people who own it now bought it and they're trying to sell the house right now and it's it's being sold and it came up on the deed uh, as not having been closed out way back when. So they are just trying to close it out and I am trying to facilitate that. And I, if something new needs to be done, I mean, we'll take care of it, but I, I wasn't sure what your thoughts were on it, Sarah, if you thought it was working or still there and functioning or what? I, you know, I, I went out just basically to make sure that things weren't built on it. Um, right. Mm -hmm. I, there were some wetland indicator plants, um, mm -hmm. but it, it appeared that those were primarily in the area that was identified as a, as a potential vernal pool and as a as a separate wetland in the original application. You know, I, I, there's nothing that indicates that you know, it's been disturbed over the years, but with regards to its functionality, I, I couldn't yeah. really say. I, I don't know how it was built. I don't know if it was. Yeah. They, they and, just describe how it was built in the, in the report, and, but there's no final plan saying did they build? I, I, I'm sure they built it that way. I mean, the, the person who built it was Mickey Marcus and Ward Smith, and Mickey remembers building it. So <laughs> I'm not sure how he remembers that, but he does. Um, but it's been there for 28 years. So, and in, in the absence of the original plans that were included in the NOI, I, I didn't even know exactly where the wetland was proposed. Oh. Um, so it was it was tough. Difficult, to, yeah. Um, and I have to say, I, I did not do a site visit, but um, wading through the, the, uh, the materials from the time and the order of conditions, um, there was a lot of uh, very specific requirements um, that uh, some of which we know were not fulfilled. There was supposed to be an as-built plan. Uh, 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 certified by a professional engineer uh, that didn't happen. Supposed mm -hmm. to be annual um, uh, inspections. Uh, uh, that was condition 28 um, until the certificate of compliance was issued. That there was apparently one end of, of season the year. Two. Mm -hmm. uh, but mm -hmm. it was, uh, uh, that wasn't done. And I'm, I'm just reluctant to uh, issue a certificate of compliance when that many specific requirements were either blown off or, or forgotten. Uh, I don't think that's a, a good precedent for us. I'm not sure what we do. Um, mm. what, I don't know quite what's possible to be done. <laughs> I know. I, I'm open to suggestions here. Yeah. <laughs> I could certainly still do an as-built plan. That's 28 years later. <laughs> um, yeah, we could. Mm -hmm. And I did, and Valerie, Valerie, sorry, you haven't seen it. Let me see if I can share this on my screen. You did that overlay? Yeah, yeah so that helped so a lot, but I still couldn't. helped a lot, <laughs> yeah. So we, um, I had our, you can see that. Right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so so uh, we overlaid the, um, the plan that was included in the order of conditions with the um, current ortho. Mm -hmm. it, it looks like at least the house is within the, um, the, the build envelope. Mm -hmm. It's very hard to tell what's going on with the, the rest of this. You know, there's a no disturb area that seems like I, at least a portion of which may be 
lawn. Um, mm -hmm. There is a shed on the property, but I, it, I think based on this, uh, you know, it's just a guess, but it looks like the driveway location may have shifted enough so that it's within that area, but mm -hmm. you know, without an as-built plan, there's no way to be sure. Mm -hmm. I don't know what other commissioners think. I, I, uh, I don't wanna be unreasonably rigid here. I just, uh, um, I, I don't like the idea of setting a precedent that well, it was long ago, it was probably close enough, we'll just let it go. I, I, I feel uncomfortable with that. It's interesting to me that uh, there's a new owner and the new owner didn't get a certificate of compliance. Well, I don't think he knew about it. Um, usually these come through obviously when you sell the house. So when he bought it, um, they did due diligence and there's, there is something that references like having a certificate, but it doesn't specify this one. And obviously you guys did not issue one, so it can't be the same thing. So it's it's confusing as to why it was missed when he bought the house, because the previous owner should have had to do that um, before he even bought it. And he's sort right. of stuck now. So so I, while I feel bad for him, I understand the situation, you know, um, and it is old. I mean, the only thing I could offer is Mickey, obviously built this and he still works for SWCA. I might be able to have him take the plan and the overlay you did, Sarah, and go out and try and recreate what he did and, and look at it from his point of view. Um, I don't know, that's an option. Having an as-built, what does that mean? That I have to actually hire a surveyor and, and get it redone or, or how do you want, would you approach that? If we issue a, a, a certificate of compliance, it indicates that the conditions were met. Right. And that was a condition. So um, some, right. some way of, of uh, meeting that condition mm -hmm. seems to be necessary. Me. Okay. At least to me, I, I'm, I, I haven't heard from other commissioners here, but uh, that's uh, how it looks to me. Mm -hmm. What do you think, commissioners? Yeah, I think it's Agree with you, Kevin. Um, I, as far as if, if an as built is necessary or the level of effort to put into an as built, I think, you know, mm -hmm. maybe we could at least discuss not needing a surveyor. You know, maybe mm -hmm. there's something that could be done with a GPS to make it cost effective but still serve a purpose. Uh, you know, I don't know. Just throwing that out. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I think I can be easily satisfied if there's something rather than nothing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, why don't I try and do it um, in a GIS format? I'll have someone go out and, you know, we'll put it in a, we'll download the ortho like you guys have. I'll have someone survey. I'll use a GPS and try and locate the wetlands from what they were in the, in that figure that we have and see what's still there. And I'll have them just take a look and see if it's functioning and working the way it should be. And we'll submit that as an as-built. And it's not much I can do about monitoring it um, anymore. It is what it is now, I guess. So, yeah. but, you know, if that would work for you all, I'll tell them that's what they need to do. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Anything um, else people want to see before we... Um... Well, it, it could be a problem because uh, the as-built should be certified by a professional engineer. So that's what it says in your conditions, but yeah. In, I, I in, don't know. Yeah, in some previous cases, the commission has agreed that information presented on a case-by-case -case basis is sufficient to meet that condition, even if it's not necessarily stamped, depending on the type of work. Uh, you know, the commission's never waived that for a stormwater system, for example, but for other types of plans, if enough information has been provided, then you have. What, what about the annual inspection report? I'm just thinking if if um, the applicant is going through the effort of going out to the site to pull together an as-built, I mean, do you think having a, an annual inspection report as part of that, just to wrap it up with and satisfy that component? Is that even worth it? Well, they're gonna have to send the wetlands guy out to, to confirm the wetland locations. Um, I, don't, I don't see a problem him submitting, submitting that as a 
Mm -hmm. it, of necessity would be sort of a summary of uh, professional judgment about what it looks like has happened over the last 28 years. Sure, yeah. and what's maybe what plants are there and a little bit of information on that. Mm -hmm. I don't, obviously we can't say it's working as a vernal pool today, but you know, we can give you some input on what it looks like and how it's how it's functioning. If it's in the right location, has anyone moved, you know, impacted the other ones? You can do sort of a summary site visit thing for you. That'd be great, thank you. Yeah. Okay, sure. Mm -hmm. Something rather than nothing would be. Okay. <clears throat> okay. No and can we... Commissioners, so we'll just we want to act on this uh, request, Sarah, for today? Or should we, I don't want to necessarily deny it. Is there a way to just continue this for, until mm. they come back to us? Well, uh, since Mark is here, let's ask him a procedural <laughs> question. But Mark, what's the best way to do this? Would it be a vote to require? Well, if both parties agree to continue it until Val comes up with the additional information, that's fine. All righty. <laughs> I'll do it. it. When's your next meeting? I could probably get it ready for that. Mm. Uh, next meeting will be, we meet second and fourth. So next one is November 12th. Okay. okay. If you can continue me to then I'll get it done for you. Do we need a, an official motion to continue to the <laughs> Well, uh, technically, like yeah. I mean, yeah. you need at least a motion to continue. Yeah. Okay. Someone want to make a motion to continue to the 12th of November? So moved. And a second? Second. And for that, roll call, Sarah? Kevin? Yes. Mason? Yes. Jack? Yes. Jason? Yes. Randy? Yes. And Alec? Yes. Thank you. Good enough. All Good right. Enough. Thanks, everybody. Thank Thanks. I'll talk to you next time. <laughs> Take All care. Right. Thank you. And Sarah, any uh, other business? Staff issue permits, et cetera? That's it for me at the moment. There were, as Mason mentioned, there were a lot of trees that came down in the new, um, yeah, the new bike path in the Burtzbog Greenway. But um, Tom, our, our field person, worked hard for an entire day, if not more, to get them out of there. So Mason, I think it's passable now. Oh yeah, yeah, it's wide open. Um, in fact, someone's doing some innovative work up there. They've taken the stumps. And they took a large branch from one of the trees. These are the oak stumps, red oak. And he's made a bench by putting a key on the end of the branch and then cutting out a corresponding section in each stump. And really good work. I mean, it's, it's a perfectly flush bench made out of a large branch and, and sections of red oak stump. Uh, now, if you could just distribute them about every 500 feet up this <laughs> bale, that would be great for us old guys out walking. But there's a, there's still a lot of trees um, in that area that are down. They haven't been cleared out. They've uh, Somebody's working on them at a time. Yeah, Mark, what's new at DEP? Anything interesting? Uh, uh, we're still working from home. They're telling us at least through the end of the fiscal uh, end of the calendar year, they haven't told us anything beyond that. So we have no idea what's happening. They're only allowing a few of us in the office at a time. Uh, we're still allowed to do site visits uh, with prior notification to our supervisors. Uh, other than that, you know, it's still busy. I'm, I'm as busy as I've ever been. Uh, there's, there's something happening everywhere. Uh, I just want to thank all of you, though, for your volunteer service to, to Northampton and all the other commissioners out there. You guys are just awesome. And I especially want to thank Sarah. She's just an absolute pleasure to work with. Hey, 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 hey. I think you're hey, lucky hey, to hey, have hey. her. So it's, it's a pleasure working with all of you. Great. Well, and it, in terms of the uh, uh, COVID, I had uh, my, uh, our son 
the youngest son uh, and his girlfriend came by uh, for an outdoor lunch a couple of days ago, and she's in her last year of medical school at Northwestern. And the conventional wisdom among the medical school faculty at Northwestern is that it's a minimum of another year like this, more likely to be two. Um, before uh, there has been a demonstrable e effective vaccine that's been widely enough distributed for long enough that we can begin to go back to normal. So it's not going to happen in January. Um, okay. Well, I do whatever they tell me to do so no, so I can keep getting my paycheck. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's the bottom line for me. Whatever they want. So oh, yeah, that's, a, that's the bottom line for us, too. We get lots of paychecks. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. Are you in yeah. West region, Mark? Oh, yeah. I handle all 106 towns. I live in Plainfield. Okay. And uh, I handle all 106 towns in the region. Last night, I did a, uh, a Ware Conservation Commission meeting. Uh, and uh, after I leave you, I'm doing a Williamstown one. So... It's actually, I can get around faster by Zooming than I can by spending all my time driving. You're sitting on the beach the whole time. Exactly. Yeah. It's a lot of fun here. Yeah. Well, I've seen your name on the thousands of documents over the last decade or so, and it's nice to meet you, sort of. You too. You too. I've seen your name a lot of places too. When Sarah tells me all about you and all the rest of you, that you, you know, she really enjoys working with you all. Yeah. A long way from, he's a long way from chairman of the West Springfield Conservation yeah. Commission. Yeah, well, for those of you that don't know, I remember Mason when he was with <laughs> D.L. Bean and, and he'd come before when I was chair of West Springfield. That was, I was forever. Yeah. It was what, 18, 19, 20 years ago, something like that. It was Let's a long time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't want to either. <laughs> All right. All right. Good seeing you guys. I got I to get ready to go to the Thank other meeting. Thanks for sitting in. Okay. Good night, guys. Good night. Thank you. Uh, Sarah, one more thing on the trail. Uh, there's a widow maker up near the um, connection to um, Overlook Drive. Okay. Is very that new? Large or has limb. it been there? It's a very large limb hanging down. Um, it's It's by a thread that it's connected to the tree up there and that falls and may drop on somebody. Okay, um, all right, uh, Tom has had to run up to California for some family stuff, but I'll have him check it out. Those are oh. tough because we can't really do them at the staff level if they're too high up, but they're, the cost to get rid of them is, it can yeah. be pretty yeah, he expensive. Trimmed a lot I'll, I'll see lower, what we can do. He trimmed a lot of the lower branches, but it, it, uh, it still looks pretty shaky. Um, may go down in a in another strong storm i mean that's the storm that took the trees down was a wind shear like that happened up on top of the mountain there and, yeah. and um, it was just it was strange it took there was one of those uh, uh down by the mill river um uh here in back of uh, uh dryads green um almost, almost to smith it was probably 50 60 feet of a long slender 10 inch diameter um, uh, branch or trunk that was caught at the top and yeah. broken off at the bottom about 18 inches above uh, grade so that it was in the wind it would swing. Um, and I, I tried pushing it, but I couldn't, and it, it was easy to move, but it, you couldn't tell how it was gonna fall. So I didn't push it very far, but I uh, went back the next day and somebody had pushed it to the extent where it let go and had broken into a couple of sections down on the Mill River Greenway path. Um, but I imagine there's a lot of those things after uh, this last set of storms. Yeah, this this looks like a pretty strong red oak and uh, it's, it's, it's a large enough diameter branch that it, could kill some of your balls. Yeah, right. Yeah, we should not test the uh, the nomenclature of Widowmaker. No, yes. right. no, no. I'll, I'll test that out. <laughs> right. All right. So, anybody else got anything? Well, good to see you all. Um, and it's, uh, sir, oh, I wanted one uh, bit of uh, clarification. Last meeting, um, when I got bumped out a couple of times. 
you said there was some irate um, participant you had to kick off the call for swearing. I don't know if anybody caught it. Uh, someone I did. Swore. I did. Yep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it wasn't just me. I was So I, I think someone thought they were on mute and they were not and they swore at me when I was done talking. <laughs> I, just, so I, I, I kicked them out of the meeting. I, it's one yeah. thing. You know, I've been in other meetings where people get animated and, and they, they use right. sort of foul language. But if you direct it at people, that, that's sort of the, that's the line that you can't cross. Well, um, and this was about that uh, um, case that uh, there was several neighbors that were saying, oh, well, this, you know, this is going to destroy the view and going to uh, prevent turtles from laying their eggs in our front yard and all that stuff. Yeah, it was a Hamden Street issue. Yeah. Okay. yeah. But there's no way to know who this person was or what they were there to do or if they just wanted to join in just to swear at someone. I see, I see. It's the, the joys of Zoom. <laughs> there, there are much worse. And I, I'm thankful we haven't had to deal with that. Yet. All right, well. Hopefully we don't. Uh, well, I, 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 I'll add my and, and our collective thanks to you for putting up with yeah. that kind of crap. Um, uh, you shouldn't have to, but thank you. Thank you. All right, everybody. Well, so November 12th. All right, uh, yeah. three weeks. It's a, there's a fifth Thursday in October, so three weeks from today. Okay, very good. Perfect. All right, thanks a lot. Good yeah. to see you. All right, thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. We'll see.